published 0333s, the 9th of November 2017, updated 0613s, the 9th of November 2017. The Prince of Wales has undertaken his first interview of his Commonwealth tour quizzed by children for his plans when he is king. Primary school children aged from 7 to 9 were given the chance to ask the prince questions on his final day in New Delhi. One pupil, a 9-year-old girl named Prajya, had a very specific question, asking when you become king, will you build a fort? Exclaiming I will to make the children laugh, he went on to declarify he had no serious plans for a fort building. The prince spent time with children from Lodge Potnagari School at the British Council, as the thick New Delhi smog forced a change of venue. The Prince of Wales visited children from the Lodge Potnagari School where he was quizzed on what he will do when he is king, with one child asking if he'll build a fort. Primary school children aged from 7 to 9 were given the chance to ask the prince questions on his final day in New Delhi. Charles also viewed a musical performance given by the children, and saw class sessions in action after posing for snaps. The children serenaded him with a song about unity, with accompaniment from the Music Bus, a charity which works with slum children. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall stand at India Gate during a visit to New Delhi. The Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall are on a tour of Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei and India. They serenaded him with a song about unity, with accompaniment from the Music Bus, a charity which works with slum children. One asked for his favorite book, with the prince taking time to mull it over carefully. What do you think it might be? He said. There are so many to choose from. Have any of you read the Harry Potter books yet? They are very good books. A second child then asked for his favorite actor, with the prince replying gracious me, when I think about it there are so many of them. There is a very good actor called Sir Anthony Sher who is a brilliant Shakespearean actor, and everything else. There are lots of others though, the Prince of Wales had his first interview of his Commonwealth tour quizzed by children for his plans when he is king at a local school in New Delhi. The Duchess of Cornwall sits in a taxi run by a company for cabs driven by women and that only takes female occupants in New Delhi. The couple visited the India Gate War Memorial in New Delhi. The royal couple have begun a two-day visit to the smog-choked Indian capital aimed at strengthening ties with India ahead of a gathering of leaders from Commonwealth nations next April in London. Meanwhile, the Duchess of Cornwall gave her royal seal of approval to a women's taxi service as she hopped in one of their cars for a drive. Camilla was leaning more about Women on Wheels, an award-winning social initiative that enables women from disadvantaged backgrounds to be trained as drivers in the bustling Indian capital, while also offering safe transport options to female travelers. The Duchess was introduced to three of the organization's 500 or so female employees, including Kyushi, 26, who told her this is a different kind of job for women. I was doing various jobs, domestic service, working as a beautician, when I heard about this from a neighbor in South Delhi. I have been working as a taxi driver and now I am a trainer and I am so very proud of my job. My father was not sure at first and a little scared for me, but my mother was always very proud. It's very unusual to see a women taxi driver, still. When I stop at the traffic lights I can see people turning round to look in at me. We only take women and families, or men when they are with a lady. Women like to use us as they feel safer. Rape and sexual assault are a big issue in India. The flame of the immortal solitaire, which is located beneath the memorial archway, was built following the Indo-Pakistan War of 1971. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall embarked on the last day of their marathon 11-day tour of Asia and India today with a visit to one of New Delhi's most famous landmarks. The royal couple visited India Gate at the heart of the city where they laid a wreath and posed for photographs. The Duchess of Cornwall is presented with a book, Lady Driver, by author Javawati Srivastava, by taxi driver Poonam from Women on Wheels, an award-winning social initiative established in 2008, that enables women from disadvantaged backgrounds to gain access to employment, while also offering safe transport options to female travelers at the High Commissioner's residence in New Delhi. Prince Charles and Camilla paid their respects at the India Gate War Memorial in New Delhi. India's Duchess also spoke to Poonam, 23, who has been working as a driver for four years, and took the royal for a spin. She also expressed her pride at what she had achieved and told Camilla how much she liked her job. Not many women in India do this, she explained. I feel very safe as we have GPS so the company can track us and a panic button. We are employed as staff with all of the benefits and it is good work to have. I probably would have worked in an office otherwise. Women on Wheels was established in 2008 through the Azad Foundation and Sokka Wings Consulting to empower disadvantaged women by helping them to become self-sufficient professional drivers. So far, Women on Wheels has helped more than 500 women across India to gain employment and the program is now being run in six cities across India.
Meenu Vidhira, executive director of the Azard Foundation and developer of the program, said the program enabled women to find a good job working in a safe and well-paid environment. The Duchess said afterwards it's a really inspired scheme. It allows women a flexible working option, that they can work around their families, in a safe environment. The Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall are pictured during a visit to India Gate for a wreath-laying ceremony Prince Charles and Camilla pay tribute at the Amar Jawin Jodi War Memorial at India Gate in the Indian capital New Delhi The Prince of Wales appeared to have a laugh when he met Shilpa Shetty during a reception at the High Commissioner's residence in New Delhi Camilla, who looked glamorous in all white, shared a laugh with the equally chic Shilpa. The actress looked striking in a bold pink dress afterwards she undertook a roundtable discussion with organizations working in one of the key spheres of her public work, sexual violence against women. Sandeep Chakra, executive director of Action Aid, told the Duchess that great strides have been made in India in terms of improving legislation to protect women. But, he warned, there was still an abysmal rate of conviction which put off women from coming forward just four in ten rapes and sexual assaults are reported to the police. The justice system is not working well when it comes to violence against women and we are seeing that the brutality of attacks increase and the age of victims go down, which is troubling, he said. Sunita Menon of Breakthrough said the Duchess had been keen to see what kind of collaboration could be developed between organizations in India and the UK in terms of learning from each other's experiences. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall embarked on the last day of their marathon 11-day tour of Asia and India today with a visit to one of New Delhi's most famous landmarks. Charles, who was dapper in a grey suit, looked delighted to meet Shilpa at the dazzling reception fashion fan Camilla admired the actress's embellished black and white jacket as they mingled at the event the couple visited India Gate at the heart of the city where they laid a wreath and posed for photographs. They were welcomed by Brigadier Goldsack British Defence Advisor, before moving to the centre of India Gate. Camilla, elegant in a white chiffon and a valentine tunic and trousers, watched as her husband laid his tribute of chrysanthemums. Afterwards they viewed some of the inscriptions on the wall of the plant and signed a visitor's book before departing. India Gate, situated at the heart of New Delhi, is India's national war memorial for soldiers. The flame of the immortal Solitaire, which is located beneath the memorial archway, was built following the Indo-Pakistan War of 1971. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall arrived in the Indian capital of New Delhi yesterday on a day where the city's levels of pollution are so high that it has been likened to a gas chamber. Experts say that in some parts of the city, residents breathing the polluted air will smoke the equivalent of 50 cigarettes. Some schools are closed and families are being advised to stay in their homes to avoid risk to their health. Charles and Camilla wearing a beige tunic and palazzo trousers are visiting India at the tail end of an 11-day visit to Southeast Asia on behalf of the Queen and the Foreign Office. They have so far visited Singapore, Malaysia and Borneo, flying in from the island of Penang this morning. Prince Charles and Camilla arrived at Indira Gandhi International Airport during a visit to India. It is the final leg of their tour of Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei and India. Although their visit is brief, the royal couple are packing in 10 engagements in less than 24 hours in the Indian capital. Today they were welcomed by the British High Commissioner, Sir Dominic Asquith, before attending a celebration of the UK India Year of Culture hosted by the British Council. They will view musical and artistic performances and a performance by the Adakalri Dance Company. Before they leave they will also plant a banyan tree to commemorate the British Council's 70-year presence in India. Afterwards the royal visitors will attend an event run by the charity Elephant Family at the British High Commissioner's residence, where they will view a parade of painted animals. The pollution levels are so high that experts say that in some parts of the city, residents breathing the polluted air will smoke the equivalent of 50 cigarettes. Prince Charles and Camilla are greeted as they arrive at Indira Gandhi International Airport during a visit to India. Although their visit is brief, the royal couple are packing in. Ten engagements in less than 24 hours in the Indian capital A Royal Air Force aircraft carrying Prince Charles and his wife Camilla arrives enveloped in smog in New Delhi, India An Indian pedestrian covers his face with handkerchief amid heavy smog in New Delhi. Delhi shut all primary schools on November 8 as pollution levels hit nearly 30 times the World Health Organization safe level, prompting doctors in the Indian capital to warn of a public health emergency. Indian school children cover their faces as they walk to school amid heavy smog and New Delhi dense grey smog shrouded the roads of the world's most polluted capital, where many pedestrians and bikers wore masks or covered their mouths with handkerchiefs and scarves. Prince Charles performs the namaste gesture as he and Camilla attend a celebration of the UK India Year of Culture hosted at the British. Council she politely demurred that she was much of an artist.
Still, the Duchess of Cornwall made a valiant effort when asked to paint in a heart on a large fiberglass elephant at a charity event today, and soon her husband joined in the fun too. The couple were at the British High Commissioner's residence in New Delhi, India, where they are rounding off an 11-day tour of Southeast Asia with a whirlwind 24-hour visit. In the gardens were dozens of large, brightly painted elephant sculptures, put there by the charity Elephant Family, of which Charles and Camilla are joint presidents. The organization was started by Camilla's environmentalist and adventurer brother, Mark Shand, who devoted his life to preserving India's dwindling Asian elephant population. He died tragically in 2014 in a freak accident in New York after which the royal couple decided to carry on his work. Camilla and Prince Charles planted a banyan tree to commemorate the British Council's 70-year presence in India as they attend a celebration of the UK India Year of Culture hosted as the British Council during a visit to India. The couple posed with two of the 101 painted sculptures, named after the 101 elephant corridors that have been mapped across the country, at an elephant parade during the Elephant Family Charity event held as the British High Commissioner's residence. Prince Charles and Camilla posed with the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, at Hyderabad House, the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall shared a laugh with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at Hyderabad House in New Delhi, India, on the latest leg of their tour of the Far East and India on arrival as the British Council, they were greeted by Mr. Alan Gemmel, Country Director and Baroness Sasha Prasha, Deputy Chair Prince Charles and Camilla Pose with Alan Gemmel, Country Director Ellen Baroness Sasha Prasha, Deputy Chair Third Right from the British Council and members of the Adical Dance Company as they attend a celebration of the UK India Year of Culture Charles and Camilla met Ruth Ganesh, Elephant Family Trustee, and Vic from Goyo, Elephant Family Patron, who introduced them to sponsors and supporters of the Elephant Family Charity, as well as the artists involved in the project. Camilla, elegant in a beige tunic and trousers, laughed when introduced to a large group of people dressed in similar shades. We all look like biscuits, like shortbread biscuits, one of the group explained, prompting giggles all round. She then was given the chance to paint an unfinished heart on a tree of love that had been painted onto one of the elephants and masterfully, despite her protestations, created a green icy leaf pattern. Charles, a keen watercolorist who regularly auctions off his own work for charity, simply painted his in blue. India is home to the largest population of Asian elephants on the planet, but survival is becoming harder for the animals as their habitat dwindles, forcing them to clash with locals. Camilla, elegant in a beige tunic and trousers, laughed when introduced to a large group of people dressed in similar shades. We all look like biscuits, like shortbread biscuits, one of the group explained, prompting giggles all round the prince and the duchess viewed musical and artistic performances and met people participating in UK India Year of Culture initiatives, including Sapton Stories, Future Leaders Connect, Premier Skills and Mix the City in an effort to combat this, 101 elephant corridors have been mapped across the country by the Wildlife Trust of India and a network of conservationists to help people and elephants live together in harmony. The 101 brightly painted elephant sculptures that make up the elephant parade will be taken to Mumbai to draw attention to this mission. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge visited Assam in the northeast of India during their visit in April 2016 and also painted one of the elephants. Elephant Family funds projects across Asia and invests where help is needed most to protect habitat, prevent conflict and reconnect the forest homes of the endangered Asian elephant. The Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall have been joint presidents of Elephant Family since September 2014. In recent years Elephant Family has supported over 160 field projects in six elephant range states India, Thailand, Indonesia, Sumatra, Malaysia, Borneo, Myanmar and Cambodia. During their trip, they will plant a banyan tree to commemorate the British Council's 70-year presence in India. Both Charles and Camilla are deeply involved with the organization. They have been joint presidents since 2014 which works to protect India's Asian elephants. It was set up by the Duchess' late brother, Mark Shand, a passionate conservationist. Although India is home to the largest population of Asian elephants on the planet, their survival is becoming harder as their habitat dwindles, bringing them into conflict with the people who live there. Elephant Family is attempting to protect that habitat and carve out elephant corridors to allow the creatures to roam with minimal contact with humans. Their final engagement of the day is a meeting with Prime Minister Modi, which is being viewed with huge significance by the Foreign Office. An Indian man exercises as the Lodi Garden is engulfed in heavy smog during early morning in New Delhi, India. People in the Indian capital city are struggling with heavily polluted air as air quality hits severe levels. According to reports, the couple will pose for an official photograph before Charles and Mr. Modi have a private meeting at which issues such as trade, the environment and Brexit are expected to be discussed.
It is the first time that the heir to the throne will have undertaken a only on one meeting with the Indian leader. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall were honoured with luxurious silk shawls and garlands of sandalwood as they experienced four religions in one day. The couple visited places of worship belonging to the Christian, Muslim, Chinese and Hindu communities in the Penang capital Georgetown as they celebrated the Malaysian city's diverse residents. Strolling down what is colloquially known as the Street of Harmony, the royal couple walked from a mosque to the temples as backpackers and shopkeepers stopped to capture the unannounced visit on their mobile phones. Drummers and other musicians led the way as they walked to the Sri Mahamriyam and Hindu temple, completed in 1833, that was ornately decorated with colorful statues and beautiful carvings of gods inside. Prince Charles and Camilla donned traditional garlands and flowers as they visited the Sri Mahamriyam and Temple in Penang, Malaysia during their tour following tradition. Charles and Camilla removed their shoes and were given a brief tour of the place of worship before shimmering gold-colored shawls were placed around their shoulders and matching garlands draped around their necks. Praveena Balakrishnan, a local historian and Hindu, said we wanted to have a fragrant garland so we chose sandalwood, flower garlands will fade and die. The silk shawls are given to kings and queens and we believe silk has the power to attract positive vibes. Outside the couple posed for photographs, with an impatient Camilla amusingly tapping her husband smartly on the arm to get his attention so that they could pose probably the only women in the world who could get away with it. Earlier in the day the couple visited St. George Church, the oldest Anglican church in Southeast Asia, a Muslim mosque where they met leaders and planted a tree, a Teochew Chinese temple where they watched a colorful lion dance. The visit was intended to show the religious diversity of Malaysia, showing how different faiths can live in peace and prosperity. Following tradition, Charles and Camilla removed their shoes and were given a brief tour of the place of worship. Camilla visited the Teochew Puppet and Opera House, where she posed with two of the elaborately costumed performers. Unique to the state of Penang, Teochew puppetry and opera came to Malaysia from the Teochew people, who emigrated from China in the 19th century. The Duchess of Cornwall receives a bouquet from schoolchildren during her arrival at the Capitan Kelling Mosque in Georgetown, the capital of Malaysia's Penang state. The royal couple walked from a mosque to the temples as backpackers and shopkeepers stopped to capture the unannounced visit on their mobile phones. The 800 meters road known as the Street of Harmony reflects the migrant communities which moved to Penang during the British administration when it was a bustling trading port. Later Camilla visited the Teochew Puppet and Opera House, where she posed with two of the elaborately costumed performers. Unique to the state of Penang, Teochew puppetry and opera came to Malaysia from the Teochew people, who emigrated from China in the 19th century. Traditionally, Teochew puppetry troops consist of nine members divided into groups of three to handle puppets, sing and play musical instruments. The musical ensemble uses the same instruments as a regular Tio opera troupe, gongs, drums, cymbals, dull simmer, fiddle and a traditional Chinese instrument made from coconut shells. The puppets themselves are intricate and detailed, taking up to three weeks to make. Camilla also happily took the starring role in an impromptu shadow puppet show, as she showed off her skills in a short play. The 800 meters road known as the Street of Harmony, reflects the migrant communities which moved to Penang during the British administration when it was a bustling trading port. The couple looked lovingly at each other as they visited places of worship belonging to the Christian, Muslim, Chinese and Hindu communities in the Penang capital Georgetown as they celebrated the Malaysian city's diverse residents. Camilla kept cool in a chic cream ensemble and wedged shoes while her husband looked dapper in a grey suit. The Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall signed the guest book during a visit to Sarawak Cultural Village on the latest leg of their tour of the Far East. Prince Charles has thanked a British diver who has helped protect the wreck of a Second World War ship bearing his name from awful looters. The prince, on a visit to Raf Butterworth in Penang, said his work in quietly preventing the ship, which is crown property, being stripped for scrap metal was marvelous and so appreciated. As a sign of his thanks he gave Stephen Flew, a 54-year-old petroleum engineer originally from Swansea who has voluntarily dived the wreck for 18 years, and the Malaysian Navy assigned photograph of HMS Prince of Wales in 1941 with its crew to them as a gift. Royal Navy battleships HMS Prince of Wales, where Churchill and Roosevelt signed the Atlantic Charter, and HMS Repulse both sank off the east coast of Malaya, near Kuantan, Pahang, on December 10, 1941, part of Force Z. It was intended to intercept the Japanese invasion fleet but instead, with no air cover, were attacked in open water and sunk by long-range torpedo bombs. Admiral Sir Tom Phillips went down with the ship, becoming the highest-ranking Allied officer killed in battle in the Second World War and causing the two ships sank with 840 sailors, and now exist as war graves on the ocean floor.
In recent years, they have become a target for looters who anchor small boats above them and use homemade explosives to loosen and then steal their metal. The Royal Navy wrecks are crown property, and looked after by the Royal Malaysia Navy which cooperates with the British High Commission to protect them. They are aided by divers from Company Extreme Divers, with volunteer Mr. Flu. For the last six years, when the problem of looting has become serious, Mr. Flu has monitored changes and activity in the ship to report to the British High Commission, who have in turn worked with the Malaysian Navy, Air Force and Coast Guard to patrol the seas. The Prince, a diver and former president of the British Sub-Aqua Club, thanked volunteers and the military, telling them he appreciated their work trying to keep these awful people away. I can't thank you enough for your fantastic work, he said. It's so appreciated, the Prince of Wales sits for a group photo with members of the Royal Malaysian Air Force and Navy and the Royal Australian Air Force and Navy, during a visit to Royal Malaysia Armed Forces Butterworth Base in Penang, Malaysia greeted by Ling Go, founder and director of museum, and assistant director Chai Lin, the Duchess posed for a photograph with the ladies in traditional dress. Moving inside, she was shown instruments including cymbals and drums, asking how they were made. Told Ling GLHS family had been puppeteers for five generations, she exclaimed it's a family affair. Directed to a table, she was shown shadow puppets and, when invited, picked one up to see how it worked. Pauline Fan, creative director of cultural organization Pusaka explained that the story had been adapted from the Ramayana ancient Indian folktale Rama and Sita. The Malaysian version tells the story of a princess, played by the Duchess puppet, who is kidnapped by an ogre king. Instructed by her beloved, she is eventually saved by an army of monkey warriors. The Duchess appeared to thoroughly enjoy herself, gamely moving the puppet's arms to play along. She then moved to listen to a Yang Qing instrument being played and admire ornate opera headdresses, before sitting down to take in a puppet show from B Professionals. Afterwards, she was given a second try at joining in, this time with a stringed puppet. The Prince of Wales plants a tree during a visit to the Sarawak Biodiversity Centre in Kuching, Malaysia, left. Meanwhile, the Duchess of Cornwall arrives at the Capitan Kelling Mosque in Penang, Malaysia. The Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall wave goodbye from Kuching International Airport in Sarawak, Malaysia, after their visit successfully manipulating its limbs with the string. She appeared pleased and surprised, telling onlookers I could have been a puppeteer. The Duchess later moved to the cool shade of the China House Cafe, a favorite Penang haunt for visitors including Julie Walters who became a regular while filming Indian summers in the region. She was shown the cafe's extraordinary selection of around 40 different cakes before sitting down with local craftswomen to learn about their skill. Pulling up a chair next to Lillian Tong, director of the Penang Peronican Mansion, the Duchess watched as they deftly embroidered a beaded pattern in a frame. It's very good, she said so impressive. My husband started a school for traditional arts and now it's scattered in different countries. I hope they'll have it here because it conserves their traditions. It's so lovely to see this, this lovely work still being done. Particularly taken with a pair of tiny embroidered slipper-like shoes, she told Mrs. Tong I love beadwork, I always have it on my clothes. It's a great favorite of mine. Offered the chance to do some sewing of her own, she tried to do a tentative stitch before apologizing for forgetting her glasses. I'm sorry I don't have my glasses but even if I did have them I'm not a very good sewer, she said. The Duchess also tried her hand at batik painting, creating the beginning of a blue flower while she asked about the colored ink artists were using. As her husband embarked his own program of events focused on heritage and the environment, which included an impromptu walkabout through the island streets she took a moment to pause for a cup of tea at China House before an evening reception. Later the prince visited Raf Butterworth to meet, first opened by the British in October 1941 but now controlled by the Royal Malaysian Air Force. Among those he met was squadron leader Caroline Wood, whose husband Wing Commander Colin Wood, is the senior British officer there, who taught his son, Prince William, weapons training when he was in the RAF. Squadron leader Wood, who has now retired, told Charles that she had been William's instructor in the Air Warfare Centre at RAF Cranwell in Lincolnshire. His brother, Prince Harry, was at the base at the same time. She said afterwards Prince William was great, really down to earth. He did a three-day course with us that had a lot of theory and he slotted straight into it. He made a few jokes at his bodyguard's expense. He pinched his lunch one day and told us, kitty ID and he needed it because he was getting a bit tubby. It was very funny. She said she had also done six months on secondment with the Prince's Trust and Charles has spotted the charity's pin badge she was wearing. It's an incredible charity and we have been able to replicate it here, especially with young women, she told him.
And then in the evening, Hollywood met royalty as Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon and Bond girl Michelle Yeoh met Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall. Prince Charles and Camilla met Malaysian actress Michelle Yeoh as they arrived at Penang's Peranakan mansion to attend a reception. To celebrate Malaysian art and culture the couple were at a reception to celebrate Malaysian art and culture at Penang's Peranakan mansion the Malaysian-born actress was introduced to the couple at a reception on the last night of their hugely successful six-day visit to her home country. The couple were at a reception to celebrate Malaysian art and culture at Penang's Peranakan mansion. Built in 1894, Penang Peranakan Mansion was originally the home of Capit and China Chinese Captain Chung Kang Kui and is a glorious example of Malay Chinese architecture. Charles, in a lounge suit, and Camilla, in a wild flowing Anna Valentine tunic, were greeted by owner Peter Soon and met with the chief minister and governor of Penang, before being introduced to Ms. Yeo, elegant in a pink dress and satin heels. One guest said the prince was speaking about how it was the first time he has visited this country and how much he has loved Malaysia. Meanwhile, Camilla appeared to be feeling the heat. Right 80 reception guests ranged from a diverse arts and cultural background and included Malaysian actress Tan Sri Dato Seri and comedian Harith Iskander. The couple were also treated to a performance on a traditional safe stringed instrument by musician and singer Elena Morang, one of the few women in the country to play professionally. One guest said the prince was speaking about how it was the first time he has visited this country and how much he has loved Malaysia. He has really connected with the people he has met and has a great understanding of the issues facing us here such as deforestation. Prince Charles came face to face with another endangered species in the heart of the Borneo jungle yesterday a five-feet orangutan. He went deep into the rainforest to see the great ape and looked on in awe as six of them came to a feeding station at the Samango Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. The prince, wearing a cream suit and tie, walked over to where one of the apes had descended. The young adult male then reached out to the prince who was holding a banana handed to him by one of the guides and he stretched out his arm too. The prince has long championed the need to save the rainforest. Deforestation is one of the key reasons the orangutans are endangered. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall enjoyed a jungle adventure today as they traveled into the heart of the Borneo rainforest. Samango is the biggest orangutan rehabilitation center in the state of Sarawak, 30 kilometers from Kuching. Visitors can see semi-wild orangutans that have been rescued from captivity and trained to survive in the surrounding forest reserve. This exclusively Asian species of great apes, found in only the rainforests of Borneo and Sumatra, are currently facing destruction of their habitats due to logging, mining and forest fires, as well as fragmentation of their habitats by roads. The main goal of the Semengo Wildlife Center is to rehabilitate wildlife captured due to prolonged captivity by humans with the objective of releasing them to the forests eventually. Charles was briefed on the wildlife conservation work carried out by the center, and then ushered to a special visitor's platform to view the orangutans in their natural surroundings. The prince visited the orangutan feeding deck and witnessed how these animals are cared for by the center's staff. The orangutans at the wildlife center are fed twice daily, and although visitors can view this from his special visitor's platform, a sighting of animals is not guaranteed as they are often able to find their own food. In the surrounding forest, Currently, there are at least 26 semi-wild orangutans in Semengo in total, roaming free within a 740-hectare forest reserve. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall enjoyed a jungle adventure today as they traveled into the heart of the Borneo rainforest. The royal couple were greeted by whirling tribal dancers as they arrived at a Sarawak cultural village and given gifts of handmade beaded garlands. It was the first time that either Charles or Camilla have been to Borneo famed for its endangered orangutans and both appeared to be delighted. Camilla and Prince Charles posed with locals in traditional dress during a visit to the Sarawak Cultural Village, where visitors are encouraged to learn through engaging with culture. The couple are on a tour of Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei and India accompanied by the Chief Minister of Sarawak and Senior Managers of the Cultural Village. The couple were also given a tour of the area, peeking into traditional Sarawak longhouse dwellings and watching cooking and craft demonstrations. The Sarawak Cultural Village that the couple are visiting is a living museum that reconstructs and conserves the traditional lifestyle and architectural diversity of Sarawak's indigenous tribes. The 17-acre site rests at the foot of Mount Santubong and encourages visitors to learn through engaging with culture. The highlight of their visit, however, was undoubtedly the Aban Warrior Dance. Also known as the Najat, it is performed accompanied by the Tabohanjang Dang, the Iban's traditional music. 
Upon arrival at the Sarawak Cultural Village, Prince Charles and Camilla were gifted handmade beaded garlands before their Turkomancy. The royal couple were greeted by whirling tribal dancers as they arrived at a Sarawak Cultural Village and given gifts of handmade beaded garlands. Prince Charles laughed with locals in traditional dress during a visit to the Sarawak Cultural Village where visitors are encouraged to learn through engaging with culture. The royal couple watched local dancers in traditional dress during a visit to the Sarawak Cultural Village. Prince Charles blows a dart as Camilla looks on during a visit to the Sarawak Cultural Village Prince Charles shakes hands with locals in traditional dress during a visit to the Sarawak Cultural Village. The indigenous dance has been passed down from generation to generation and is believed to have been in existence, along with the Aban tribe. Since the 16th century, the Naja dance was traditionally performed by warriors on their return from battles, although it is now performed to celebrate the most important harvest festival, Iwidayak, and to welcome important guests to the long houses. Traditionally, the male dancers wear a kawit, or loincloth, and a headdress made from the tail feathers of the hornbill. They hold a long sword in one hand and an ornately decorated shield in the other. The indigenous dance that the tribe performed for the couple has been passed down from generation to generation and is believed to have been in existence, along with the Aban tribe. Since the 16th century, the Sarawak cultural village that the couple are visiting is a living museum that reconstructs and conserves the traditional lifestyle. Female dancers have an elaborate headdress, chains, beads and a dress that reaches to below their knees with intricate weaving. The dance is now performed to celebrate the most important harvest festival, Iwidayak, and to welcome important guests to the longhouses the Naja dance was traditionally performed by warriors on their return from battle. Same Alanu bamboo dance was performed before the prince and the duchess depart in eye-catching style on a traditional raft across a lake. Later Charles and Camilla will speak with representatives from local tribes and discuss the preservation of traditional cultures. Female dancers have an elaborate headdress, chains, beads and a dress that reaches to below their knees with intricate weaving. The male dancers make slow movements, as though stalking the enemy, before darting forwards to attack. The dance is performed accompanied by the music from percussion instruments including the Angkor Mung, Bandai and Kanang. Later Charles and Camilla will speak with representatives from local tribes and discuss the preservation of traditional cultures. The Milanu bamboo dance will be performed before the prince and the duchess depart in eye-catching style on a traditional raft across a lake. The Earth of the Throne has helped launch the Forgotten Foods Network, a project to find long-lost and unfashionable foods to feed the world's booming population and grow in extreme temperatures. A woman donned traditional dress ahead of the visit by Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall to the Sarawak Cultural Village Royal Approval Prince Charles inspecting superfoods in Malaysia on Friday and hopes to emulate the success of quinoa, once considered the lost crop of the Incas before foodies rediscovered its highly nutritious properties and made it fashionable. The scheme is now collecting forgotten recipes and testing them for their nutritional value and growing abilities in hotter weather. During his visit to Crops of the Future, the Malaysian organization behind the project, Charles tasted some of the recipes, including kevaru roti, a type of millet grown in arid areas of Africa and Asia. They're good, he said, and very nutritious as well. Are they also on the menu were biscotti using bomber ground nut rather than almond, as well as soup, mini burgers and quiche made from moringa, a superfood dating back to the ancient Greeks and Romans. More elaborate dishes included dragon fruit tortellini with turmeric yogurt and mint oil. One royal aide said the prince was passionate about the project, while Charles himself said that the focus on finding crops that would grow in the future was crucial for food security over the next 20 years. He also praised the food project as impressive as he launched it during his 11-day visit to Southeast Asia. Professor Savia Dezomali, of the Forgotten Foods Network, said it's about collecting recipes from as many people as possible from all over the world, and learning from them.